I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ in Russellville, Kentucky. We meet at 689 North Main Street in Russellville, right next to Kentucky Fried Chicken, so Come on down and see us. We start our worship 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings, Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock, and uh, we'd love to have you come and get to know us. If you'd like to study God's Word at any time throughout the week, we'd be happy to meet with you. Just reach out to us. You can email me, northsidechurchofchrist at hotmail.com, or you can contact us online through our website, through our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. Just do a Google search. Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. We'll pop right up. And you'll find links to all those pages so that you can learn a little bit more about us. Uh, you can do some of your own Bible studies. We have some links on there that will lead you to other uh, places that you can study God's Word. And if you're not in our area, then uh, just reach out and we'll find somebody in your area. We know brethren all over the world. Uh, we can find uh, some folks that will reach out to you and study God's Word and answer any Bible questions that you might have. And uh, while you're turning your Bibles uh, this morning to Proverbs chapter 8... And looking forward to that study, I'd like to introduce once again, Nick Greeman. Good morning, Nick. Hey, good morning, Chris. And again, welcome back to listening to those who are listening. Boy, if I can talk this morning, maybe we'll get a program in. <laughs> so <laughs> so those who are tuning in, listening or joining us on YouTube, well, I am so glad that you guys have decided to do so. And if you want to uh, get in touch with me directly, my telephone number is 270-999-2600. If you got a Bible question, I'll be happy to answer it. If you are in the area and want to get together and study like at McDonald's or something, I'll be happy to do that too. Well, if you want to come on out to services here in Butler County, then our address is 3628 Lovely Road. That is uh, just in the Jetson area of Butler County. So you're looking at the northeast corner of the county. We meet at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings, Sunday evenings at 5, and midweek Bible studies Wednesdays at 7. And so golden opportunities, don't waste them. And uh, again, my uh, telephone number is 270-999-2600. Uh, Nick and I uh, do quite a bit throughout the week. Uh, you know, we're we're a few miles from each other. Uh, he's north of Bowling Green. I'm in Russellville, but um, we've been we've had the opportunity to kind of reach out to people all over the world, for that matter. Uh, we're involved in a couple of other programs, and so if you have time uh, throughout the week, you can join us in some other studies. Uh, you can go to Facebook or YouTube and look up Answering Religious Error. Uh, we do some work on those programs. Uh, that's every Tuesday at noon and Wednesday at noon. Uh, Nick, you join us a lot on the Wednesday program for a live Bible Q&A, and uh, those have been some uh, really good studies. Glad to be part of that group that's doing that. Uh, Nick, you have a radio program on Sunday mornings. Ironically, sometimes we're mm -hmm. we're stuck with the time period that's given us, so while you're in the middle of service, you actually have a radio program going on. You want to tell uh, folks about that? Yeah, sure. WLBQ out of Morgantown. Uh, you can... Uh, look them up uh, they have a podcast form uh, you know live stream if you're not in the area uh, but at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings you know you can hear this golden voice again <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> you want to meet uh, a person run on down to Christian home congregation so that's right that's right uh, so, so and, and you've got links to that on your website as well as well as a nice page for Bible talks on there too I really appreciate uh, your efforts on that and, of course, you can find all the Bible Talks programs on the Northside uh, YouTube channel, uh, which, of course, video is running right now. Um, and so uh, happy for you to turn to that. I also do a program on, uh, on Sunday evenings uh, called Truth and Reason. And you can find that through uh, YouTube. Just look up Truth, Reason, Bible Studies. I also have a Facebook page for that. And you can go to that and uh, find those studies as well. And so we're going through a study of Philippians right now. So um, that, that's that, those are a few of the things uh, that we do online that anybody can access from anywhere. And uh, but like we keep saying, just reach out. We'd love to get to meet you. We want to get to know you. We want to worship God together and give praise to his name and put on the excellence of wisdom. So as we turn to Proverbs chapter eight, we get to look at the topic of the excellence of wisdom. 
And it's a lengthy chapter. We're going to try to read as much as we can. And it's kind of a, some of it's a little replay of the things that we've been studying. Proverbs has got some repetition. We're not going to deny that. But how many times do we need to be told to something before it starts sinking into our minds? Mm. And I think there's a lot of wisdom of reading as much about the wisdom of God. And so I'll begin in chapter 8 and verse 1. Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates, at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. Well, I'll just stop there for a moment. We're going to see mm -hmm. much of the same kind of theme as we go on. But wow, what a stark contrast from the enticement of the immoral woman that we saw in last mm -hmm. week's lesson from yeah. Proverbs chapter 7. But here we're looking at something that would never cause harm. And in fact, look at how it's pointed out here that wisdom cries out to everyone. We, we like to use the term the gospel is for all, um, you know. We got nothing against education. In fact, you know, for a lot of people, church is their education to come and learn about God's word. We encourage people to be part of our, our classes and our studies so they can learn more about God's word. That's the purpose of studies like this, to get into the word of God. And, uh, and as the scripture says here, whether you are simple minded and, you know, don't, don't, don't down yourself because maybe you're not as smart as somebody else or that you don't have the degrees hanging on the wall or that you didn't have a, a big education or, or all those kinds of things. What is God looking for? He's looking for the willing heart, the open mind. And what wisdom is saying here is that I can take the simplest of people and make them understand. Mm -hmm. You can be wise in the eyes of God. And I know for a guy like me, that's very encouraging. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was really cool too, Chris, uh, especially verse six there. I, I think it really captures something very important to understand about wisdom literature in the Bible in and of itself. But there is uh, there's a line in the sand, so to speak. You know, there's not this little wishy-washy, uh, like, oh, this is just some kind of fortune cookie proverb, right? <laughs> you, uh, these things are things that it is a di distinction between life and death. It is a distinction between godliness and worldliness. It is a distinction between being right and wrong. And and there and when it comes to wisdom, the first thing that we should be made aware of is that there is a judge and we will be judged. And and that's the first start of wisdom. When we start having that that humility like, oh wait a second, I'm going to be held accountable. But then the wisdom uh, passages once we have that reality it moves us to action that's the distinction between uh the proverbs that we read here versus a fortune cookie at a chinese restaurant you know we are being moved to action look at verse six listen for i will speak noble things and the opening of my lips will reveal right things yeah. for my mouth will utter truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips there is a line drawn in the sand and and which side are you on which side do you want to be on mm -hmm. fear god keep his commandments is, is really the end of the day yeah and it's not about patting ourselves on the back and saying oh look how wise i am i mean we're mm. talking about god's wisdom here there's yes. a wisdom of worldliness uh which i think james uh chapter three deals with and then there's the wisdom of god and this reminds me of what ephesians 2 teaches us because uh, one of the things I appreciate so much about the grace of the Lord uh, that we're saved through faith uh, in verse 10, of course, a lot of people go to this passage and say, well, you know, works don't save us. Well, maybe my works don't, 
but I'm not relying upon what I uh, can do. I'm doing the works of God. That's the works we're talking about. In verse 10, emphasizes this when it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Yeah. And that's what these this wisdom literature is all about, is that we are walking in the wisdom of God. I'll tell you, there are a lot of things I'm not smart about. Uh, I'm not great at math, never have been, never really cared for it too much. I wish that I did. Uh, I wish I had taken better uh, advantage of my my youth and the education that I was given. Uh, but I did like a lot of kids did. I didn't really make it my priority in life. But, uh, boy, if I went to school right now, I'd be a straight A student. And uh, I really learned to get my act together as I got older in life. And I'm glad to say that some of my greatest education has come from the word of God and uh, being able to share that with others. And I think some of God's people, quite frankly, are some of the smartest people in the world that learn to study and apply themselves to the education that this book called the Bible. And, you know, a lot of the prominent schools that existed, maybe turn of the century or whatever, well, 19th, 20th centuries all, uh, were Bible schools, <laughs> you know, that eventually, I forget <laughs> that we're in the 21st century, but <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I'm that old. Uh, but that's, that's just the whole point is a lot of, there was a time when the world gave a little bit more credibility to the Bible itself. And that's how people learn to read and write. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say, just look at the Bible as an academic book. But wow, the things that you learn about life, you can tell real easy the difference between people that follow the Bible in our world today versus people that don't, mm. you know, and you, you can't always judge somebody when they're walking down the street. But you look at some people and you might think, hey, you know, that that person might be a Christian. Uh, they're mm -hmm. decent. They're kind. They treat people well. You know, they're respectful or whatever it might be. And then you can look at some people and say, those people don't go to church anywhere. You know, I mean, call it judging or whatever you want to call it. You look at people today and you can see godliness from unrighteousness. And God said that we must judge with righteous judgment. Using the wisdom of God to see the difference between right and wrong so that we know what direction to go. You remember what we studied last week, Nick? When we talked about a man looking through his window, seeing an event unfold before him between a harlot and a young man who was mm. foolish and blind and gave in to the enticements of sin. You can just see it unfold yeah. and it is not godly and it will never have a godly outcome. Let's continue reading from verses 12 and following when he says, I wisdom. Well, when she says, because wisdom <laughs> is personified with a uh, female personality here. Uh, I, you know, why probably for the, maybe the nurturing, like a mother. I mean, a, a lot of what we study from Proverbs has been a father's instruction to the son. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when it talks about wisdom, it gives it that female personification. And when you get into chapter 31, and I love that chapter, uh, you're talking about the value, the value of this woman and, uh, the virtuous woman. And that's who wisdom is to be to us. Okay, let's get back to our reading. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth, I hate. Counsel is mind and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, uh, yes than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Look at the benefits of wisdom on just mankind. Mm -hmm. I, who do you want leading you? Who do you want as your leaders? Right. You know, well, I need people smarter than me to, re to lead me. Mm -hmm. I need people who exact wisdom and justice. I need that to guide me through this life. And uh, Proverbs is all about that. Right. And we can tell a king for, uh, that is going to be leading with righteousness or a king that's going to be leading 
uh, with ignorance, right? I mean, right. how many people will follow a king who is uh, being selfish and dictatorial and not not righteous in his judgment, right? It, it's right. there's a there's an obvious distinction between the two types of leaders you can have, and and everybody is going to be pretty consistent whether you are a believer or not, that you want a ruler ruling over you that is genuine, sincere, righteous, and faithful to his position. And, and there's, there's no denial. Uh, and, and of course, the only true source of, of wisdom is godly wisdom. And, and so we, we're reminded time and time again that we need to be diligently seeking that wisdom. Uh, seek and you will find. Does that know what Jesus says in Matthew 7? And so let us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek wisdom diligently. And and so that's that's just this, it's just the message time and time again here. And so just it's a fantastic reminder. It sure is. You know, and when we think about our, our leaders, I mean, there's so much corruption in the world and we all know it. We hear about mm -hmm. it all the time, but people that strive to serve God, um, you know, you, you can count on them. People that really strive to serve God, not people that just claim a certain faith or say they go to a certain church, but live by godly principles. That's who you want uh, making, you know, the laws and the rules for the lives that we live. Um, and, and we see many great examples of that all through the Bible. We see godly leaders and then you see leaders in times of, oh, well, like we deal with today, you know, times of just sin and deprivation. You see men like Joseph, you know, who rose to power because God was with him. You see men like Daniel, who all through his life uh, was in Babylonian captivity and then, you know, the Persians and the Medes and so on. And what did he have? He had nothing but the spirit you know, spirit of excellence is what is said about him mm -hmm. because he did things in a godly way. And because he believed in God, he was saved from the lion's den. He influenced Kings, you know, men like Nebuchadnezzar changed his tune. Darius changed his tune. Uh, he made a decree to serve the one and only God. I mean, that's, that's fantastic because, well, when they conspired against Daniel, you know, the, the governors and the counselors and, and, and everyone that was advising the King, they conspired against him based on his God because they couldn't find any fault in him. Mm. They couldn't what a testament. Him. People were prospering because godly men were in charge. People were blessed. The land was good because godly men were running things. And I tell you what, if you want to be blessed today, if, if, if what this life and blessings of this life are what it's all about, get some godly people to run some things. True godly people. And uh, and they're going to advise. I mean, look at uh, Mordecai in the, mm -hmm. in the days of Esther. Um, you know, he rose to the ranks. Why? Because of God. It's not just their story, but it's stories about the state of the people when God's people were leading the nations. And, and here's right. what you see all through the Old Testament. I probably mentioned this before when we studied the Old Testament last year, Nick, in our studies. But um, usually when a king uh, served God, so did the nation. When right. a king did not, and they turned to idolatry, why didn't that nation rebel against that and decide, we're going to serve God? Well, no, they turned to idolatry. And that's right. eventually what led them into captivity and the loss of their homes. Leadership. Yeah. The, it's yeah. the leadership. Comes leadership back to is that. a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. I don't know if we're going to get through this entire chapter, but let's go ahead and try to knock out the reading at least. And so, Nick, if you want to pick up with verse 22, and um, we'll see what we can cover. and before we wrap up our program. All right. Verse 22 it says, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. From everlasting I was established, from the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set for the sea its boundary so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him. 
as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. And so, yeah, you got this uh, beautiful. I mean, it's, it's very parallel to Job yeah. uh, beginning there. Is it verse 38? Yeah. Uh, when Chapter. when God speaks up, says, Job, where were you when I laid the foundations right. of the earth? And Job in chapter 28 is like, where can wisdom be found? It's with God. Right. And it's always been with God. True wisdom, wisdom, God is its source. And so the yeah. way it's describing here, I, I think is pretty cool. It says when, when the earth was, let's see, where was it at? Verse 27, when he established the heavens, I was there. Sometimes people think wisdom is just the element of them learning from their experiences in life or whatever. But wisdom's game. been around a lot yeah. longer than any of us. Right. God set in 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 motion the the life that we should have, morality, whatever it might be. He didn't just make this up as he went along. Mm -hmm. You know, he established this from the beginning of man and had expectations of man. I mean, we were pure and innocent in the sight of God until, you know man ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and transgressed against God's one command, you know, of doing those things. And so uh, in this passage, uh, wisdom is there. And my delight was with the sons of men. God takes great joy in, in our praise to him. Mm. He loves us. Let's not forget John three sixteen. There's not a rel religious person alive that doesn't know that verse by heart. You know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God delights in that, that we should serve him. And he has given us all the tools that we need in order to be saved. Let me read these last few verses. We're going to have to wrap up our program today. But the next chapter is just as amazing and beautiful. So next week, when we get into chapter nine, we'll kind of revisit some of these things here when we talk about, you know, the house of wisdom. But in verse 32, it says, now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways, hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Well, Got to bring in a little bit of that, right? To remind right. us of the contrast of life and death. Seek the wisdom of God. Listen to her words. They will save you in life. They'll give you a good life. And we're going to see as these lessons unfold, what a good life you can have in the Lord. Good right. work ethics, success, blessings. I'm not preaching a health and wealth kind of thing here. But when you apply God's wisdom to your life, you're going to have a good life. God promises that. Thank you for listening to Bible Talks today, and we hope that you'll join us next time. Go ahead and read chapter 9, and uh, we're going to have a good study next week on Bible Talks. We'll see you then. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name.